seven or eight girls watching me. You think I'm going to mess up my hair with a helmet? <laughs> no chance. I'm in for a good night. Take care. <laughs>
it's got this beautiful, it, this is a work of art tank with the inserts here for your knees and you really do need those because the bend of my leg is quite extreme and my knee is beautifully just tucked in behind this recess in the tank. Even just the first 15 minute ride now with Monica, I can already feel I'm getting a bit like Arnold Schwarzenegger because when you're <laughs> hunched over like this and you've got a pillion, you're pretty much basically completely crouching like this non-stop. So I feel like I've done a huge workout, but that's classic cafe racer riding position. And I'll show you the clocks. Just come and have a look at what I see, Monica, before we head off. This is, in fact, I love this, look at that. Just so many details. I almost forgot to say the price, 6,200 pounds to the best of my knowledge. 6,200 pounds for this motorcycle makes it the best value cafe racer on the market now, 600cc plus. And I'll get onto the rivals later in the video, but it's superb value. Dashboard, sorry Monica, I'll get you around here again. Dashboard, this is what you see. It's as basic as you can possibly imagine. You get the, the rev counter here and the, uh, the speed here. It's actually got a fuel gauge to be fair. And I know I always say this, the BMW R9T does not have a fuel gauge and that's about a 13,000 pound bike. But apart from that, nothing else at all. I think you get to ABS as standard. Now, because this is a cafe racer bike, Damn it, my comb's over there. It's a cafe racer bike and it's all about the style. The style is just as important as the bike. And these ton up boys, they would often have a group of young ladies watching them as they're about to get ready for a race. Picture it, Ace Cafe, Friday night. I've just had a beer or two. My hair is freshly combed. I've got all of my friends egging me on to hit that magic ton before I get to Ace Cafe. Six, seven or eight girls watching me. You think I'm gonna mess up my hair with a helmet? <laughs> no chance. There's a coffee shop one and a half miles that way, and if I can make it to that coffee shop within the time that the jukebox ends, I'm in for a good night. Take care. <laughs> Let's take it back. Taking the bike back early, this is stupid. This bike turns you into an animal. This bike makes me want to go to a bar, order a pint of beer, down the beer, smack the barman in the side of the face and then start making out the bar lady. It turns you into an animal. You've got the Harleys over in the US that got the reputation from the likes of, I don't know, the Hells Angels, Easy Rider, that kind of stuff. This, this is the British equivalent here. You feel like an absolute animal when driving this. I almost bought a pack of cigarettes from the tobaccoria earlier. Okay, as a riding thing, it is just unspeakably fun. Really, I do mean it. Just, I mean, roads like this, look at where we are, in the north of Tenerife, just on the side of a road here. It's, uh, it's beyond a joy, honestly. It is one of the most fun, involving bikes I've had. That position, that riding position where you're hunched over, it's not unpleasantly so with these levers like this. If you come that side, Monica, just to show, it's not actually as unpleasant or unpleasantly aggressive a riding position. I can actually go like that, or you can hunker down. It's so involving, and just so you can see there with a the knee, and, and you can hunker down like that. And when you hit these bends, with this amount of power, you're using everything all the time. It's so involving. It's just one of the most joyous bikes I've ever ridden. I really do mean it. Look, if you're buying this for your only bike, then I completely understand that it is compromised because it is, it is not as comfortable as the Interceptor. So it's harder using this as an everyday bike. It is like if you're doing a journey over an hour, you probably do have to mentally prepare for it unlike you do for the Interceptor. I would tour Europe on the Interceptor. I would not tour Europe on this bike. So yes, the Interceptor is much, much more comfortable and easier to live with on a daily basis, but that, that's completely missing the point of this bike because a cafe racer, by its definition, is not a comfortable, practical bike. A cafe racer is a proper stripped back racing bike, so you will not be buying this bike looking for the last word in practicality and ease of use. You're buying it for the nostalgia, you're buying it for the experience. So you will not hear me mention 
190 Mercedes. People often say, Freddie, get some of those on camera. They're everywhere, I promise you. You will not see me mention a lack of practicality. I've got to remember this one more time on this video because you, you will not be looking at this bike for practicality, but as a toy, as a plaything, something to take out on a Sunday, something even to commute on for 20 minutes at a time, something to hit the bends like you can see in front of me now where you're using every ounce of power, every single bit of your mental strength is being used to hit the right corner at the right time. There is, oh, there's almost nothing better than this. It's an unspeakably fun bike to ride. I had in my mind ready, I'll be completely honest with you, often before I start a video, I've got something in my mind and I thought with this one, look, no, it's gonna be too cramped, it's too impractical. Right, here you go, just, this is probably the angle I'm going to go with the video. No, I'm wrong. I like it much, much more than I thought I would actually. This is a very, very special bike. We're just in a row of eight cars here, and I'll be quick so I know it's focusing on the bike today. This, I mean, look at this. This is. Someone let me know what Opel or Vauxhall this is, but I have never seen one of these in my life. This has got to be a very, very special car. Let me know. Let me know what is it? Stunning thing, isn't it? And then, Monica, have a look at this. Classic 1960s Fiat 600, Fiat Seicento. Just casually parked up. Everyday cars here. That has some proper patina on it, actually. That's clearly in daily use, but that's amazing. And of course, Mercedes 190E. Okay, that's the car segment, but look at that. 12 cars in a row. Mercedes 190, Fiat Seicento, incredible looking Voxel that I've never seen in my life before. Let me know what that is, I have no idea. Okay, back to the bike. If you come to Tenerife and usually spend your time in the south of the island, honestly, the north is like a completely different country. It's so lush and magical, so highly recommended. And that's where Maskemoto, which is where we rented the bike from. And at the end of the video, I'll actually show where we rented this bike from or where you can rent the bike from at the end of the video, right up on the north coast of the island. But it gets you thinking over a coffee. Let's have a look at the residuals of the Royal Enfield Continental because right now it's £6,200 brand new. However, when it first came out, and I'm just checking I've got my numbers right, it was £5,700 back in 2018. So I had a look on Auto Trader to have a look at the cheapest Royal Enfield Continental that I could find. For a 2019 model, the cheapest one is £5,100 and the second cheapest is £5,500. 
That means that in the past three to four years, this bike has lost 500 pounds maximum. 500 pounds depreciation in three to four years is absolutely incredible. And it's a testament to the desirability of these Royal Enfields. Look, if we have a look at the competition, you're probably in reality going to be looking at the used bike market for anything to even come close to comparing to this. You could look at the Triumph Street Cup and that comes in at around about five and a half thousand pounds second hand for a 2016 model. But for me, this, this is a better looking bike than the Triumph Street Cup. So you're going to be losing out in about 20 horsepower worth of power, but I would be taking this bike. And then you could look at the Kawasaki W800. Well, that's 9,100 pounds. And you know the interesting thing about that? Even though it's an 800cc, it's got 46 horsepower. So slightly less or one less horsepower than this bike. And the Kawasaki W800, 9,100 pounds right now. If you want it second hand for a 2019 bike, you're looking at 5,400 pounds. That means that the Kawasaki W800 has lost around about three and a half to four thousand pounds in depreciation in the past three years three and a half to four thousand pounds depreciation loss compared to this a 500 pound depreciation loss in the same amount of time and the only other bike i'd put in there as well is the suzuki sv 650x that comes in at 7k that is 68 horsepower so significantly more powerful than this but for me this is the truer more authentic cafe racer bike so out of all of the competition I'm looking at, and I know you've got the Triumph Thruxton, but that's 13,000 pounds. For me, this is the one to go for, whether it's a new or used proposition. In 1973, motorcycle journalist Wallace Wiss described the cafe racer or a cafe racer as a motorcyclist who played at being an Isle of Man TT street racer. And that is exactly what this bike gives you. I just can't help myself. Every time I ride this bike, it takes me back in my mind to 1960s street racing. I just can't help it. I'm riding so aggressively. I'm wanting to attack every bend to hit every corner. I'm wanting to overtake every car on the road. And I think there's a strong argument that bikes like this in the sportier guise as whether it's a super sports bike or a super naked, I think they make even more sense as a lower powered bike like this. And here's my argument for it. And I know I always hark back to it, but when I had my Triumph Speed Triple 130 horsepower, these quick bikes, these new bikes are so damn good, it's incredibly difficult to hit the limits. So in order for these bikes to make sense, the faster bikes, you want to hit the limits. You want to get down at a serious lean angle. You want to hit the apex at the perfect position on the road. But they're so quick, 
If I'm getting any kind of proper lean angle on one of these sportier bikes, I need to be doing about 110 miles an hour to make it work. But on this, you can properly commit to the bends at slower speeds. You can get a better lean angle into the bends at a slower speed. It means that you really can be taken back to believing that you're an Isle of Man TT racer. It means that if I'm going to my parents for Sunday lunch, I can take this. It means that if I'm going to a coffee shop on a Friday afternoon, it means that if I'm commuting to work, this bike for every single journey can turn into a mini Isle of Man TT race just for me. And I don't need to worry about losing my license and I don't need to worry about killing myself. It turns me into my own little Isle of Man TT racer from the 1960s. And that feeling alone is absolutely priceless. Beautiful old. That's a Moto Guzzi actually, lovely old bike. This Mas K Moto in the north of Tenerife is where we got this beautiful rental bike from. They sell motorbikes but also rent out a good selection of Royal Enfields, Moto Marinis and other bikes. And I hope you can hear me over this Moto Guzzi trying to start. But definitely if you're coming to the north of the island to stay, this, this is your place to come and rent out a motorbike. I've met the, uh, the couple who own it, Canarian couple, very, very sweet, very helpful, so hugely recommended. And I will leave all of the details in the written description of Mas K Moto. Oh, good luck to them. Thank you so much for coming along with us today. Let me know what you think about this bike. For me, I was blown away with it and it's one of the most beautiful bikes that I've been lucky enough to ride. So please do give the video a like, subscribe to the channel, and we will see you in the next one. And good luck to them.